هاي كيف حبايبي واليوم اجيتكم بامسيه حلوه شعبيه من فلسطين لدعم طلاب فلسطين اليوم ان شاء الله تكون امسيه حلوه وكل احنا ننبسط ونستمتع بهالامسيه ونشوف عازف على العود مطرب ودبكه كوميديان كوميدي وكوميدي كوميديان وكوميديان وان شاء الله نستمتع كل احنا الى اللقاء اهلا وسهلا بالجميع اهلا وسهلا فيكم تابعوني على مغامرات عايده ولا تنسوا لايك سبسكرايب تعليق حلو احبكم طبعا هذا الجزء من الحفلة ست ميسة الأمر حبيبة قلبي طبعا ست ميسة من الناس المعروفين بكولومبوس حبيبة قلبي حلوين أهني بحلوين أحلى مصورة وأحلى دبكة الله يسعدهم صبايا طبعا لساتها ما تبلش الحفلة إن شاء الله تبلش ونستمتع كلنا كل المشاهدين يستمتعوا ان شاء الله. انت من الدبكه ها؟ طبعا هنا جزاء سيما حبيبه قلبي. To celebrate who we are. Oh, fuck, I'm sorry, I'm just trying to work. It's okay. <laughs> we are here tonight to celebrate who we are as Palestinians and to tell the whole world that we are not going anywhere and we're going to have a lot of fun. And tonight, it's happening in Columbus, Ohio. <laughs> My name is Ahmed Zahad. I'm very happy to be with all of you here tonight. All right, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> So happy to be with all of you. I come to you all tonight. Please, if you're talking, please, please stop the talking on the side. We'll have time for all of that, I promise. Hello, sir. Oh, that's all right. I'll wait, I'll wait, I'll wait. Oh, I know it's very hard with the Arabs, but I'll wait. I'll wait. Baby zero. I come to all of you here tonight from Dearborn, Michigan. Now, I don't know if you've heard of Dearborn, Michigan. It is the Arab capital, the Arab Disneyland. We have everything there. All the Arabs are there, everything is there. You can have a falafel, a hookah, and a muzahara all in the same day. And that's where I come from today. I always say, let me just get it off from the beginning. I came to Columbus today, but I went to the University of Michigan three times. Okay, good. We got that out of our system. We're good now? Okay, good. I feel like I'm at a checkpoint. Go back, guys! <laughs> and we are here tonight to celebrate who we are as Palestinians and to show everyone and ourselves how we're going to support each other as Palestinians. Tonight we're here to celebrate REACH Education Fund. REACH Education Fund is a beautiful Palestinian organization that helps to make sure that the next generation of young Palestinians can go to college and have that foundation to build for themselves. Because we Palestinians, I'm not ashamed to say it, we have the most beautiful culture on planet Earth. I'm not ashamed to say it. I ain't ashamed. We Palestinians are the most educated people on planet Earth. We are the most intelligent people. We are the most overachieving people on planet Earth, okay? We have more PhDs than anybody. We don't, we don't. Please, if you're talking on the side, you can go outside for a second till, till I'm done. Thank you. We are the most educated people on planet Earth. We have more PhDs than anybody else on planet Earth. We, we don't just, we're not just a doctor in the hospital. 
hospital, we are the chief of staff of the hospital. We are not, we don't just work in the garage, we own the garage. That's what we do. We overachieve. And people always ask me, why are Palestinians so successful? I tell them it's very simple. We don't have plan B. We cannot mess up and go back to our country. It doesn't work like that for us. So we make it work. And we never go on vacation. We work very hard and people say to me, why don't Palestinians go on vacation? I tell them it's very simple. We don't like to leave our house for more than two or three days. We remember what happened last time we did that. Raise your hand if you are an immigrant to the country of the United States of America. See? And we are very successful. Listen to the people. If you're talking on the side, please, 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 in respect to everybody else, please, uh, let's keep it down. I'll wait. Thank you. Raise your hand if you are a refugee from 1948 or the descendant of a refugee from 1948. See? 88% of the Palestinians who live in Gaza are, re are refugees from 1948. Reach is putting those people through school. My dad became a refugee. He was born in Yaffa. He became a refugee in 1948. He was, we shouldn't say kicked out. Let's use the right words. He was ethnically cleansed from his homeland when he was one month old. And just so that he could go to college, he had to finish first in high school, and he did. And just so that he could go from college to a master's program, he had to finish first in college, and he did. And just so that he could go from a master's program to a PhD program, he had to finish first in his master's program, and he did. And then he came to America, and he worked for a company for 35 years, and he had a big house and a lot of nice cars, and he put all his kids through college. See, this is the Palestinian story. We come from nothing to everything. It is the most beautiful story on planet Earth. Do you know how hard it is to be the son of this person? Okay, he's achieved everything. I could never impress him. I remember when I was a kid, I brought my test home from school. I said, Baba, here's my test. I got a 96. Where is the other four? And I was like, oh, how do you deal with this guy? Can't deal with these refugees. They're overachieved. And so tonight we're here to celebrate who we are. This is not tonight just a celebration of our culture. This is a celebration of our history and our steadfastness and our smooth and our power and our beauty. Because they've been trying to get rid of us for a really long time. And it is not working out for them. They've been trying to get us to forget for a really long time. But there's 400 people tonight in Columbus, Ohio to tell them, no, it's not going to work. And so we are here tonight to celebrate all of that. So we're gonna have a great night tonight. We have deputy, we have singer, we have food, we have, if everybody behaves, I will do a comedy show after dinner, okay? We're gonna have a great time here tonight in Columbus, Ohio. So are you all with me? Yes, is everybody here? We've done shows so far in this, we've gone to, to, to Alabama, to Texas, Louisiana, we're going to Tennessee, I find Arabs in the South, and I'm like, what are you doing here, man? I watch Fox News, we're not very popular. I don't know why you're here. And then all the Arabs in the South, they explain it to me, and it makes perfect sense. They say, I'm going to come here because the weather is very nice like back home. Number two, you can carry a gun with you wherever you want to go. <laughs> Number three, you can marry your cousin and nobody cares. <laughs> hey, sometimes we are. Let me understand before I start tonight who's here with us tonight. Are there any Arabs who are with us tonight that are not Palestinian? Any Arabs? Yeah, where are you from? Iraq. Iraq? Ala, ala, ala. Okay, Iraq. How about you? Huh? Please be quiet on the side. Please, please, please. Yes? Ish? It up. We did it up already. Yes. <laughs> Just one at a time, yes? Jordan? Wait, are you really Jordanian or are you one of us Jordanian? You're like really Jordanian. 
like Mensa Bedouin Jordanian. Okay. Alright, just want to make sure. Yes? Yemen! Yemen! Yemenis are my favorite people. I'll talk about you later. Okay. Syrians! Alright, wonderful. Good. Yes? Yeah? Lebanon. See how she said Lebanon? I love Lebanese people. It's my people. Yes? Moroccan? Alright, wonderful. Good. Yes? Tunisia. That's right. The first Arab Spring. Yes? Are you raising your hand? Now? Algeria. Jazad. Yahala. Yahala. Good. Is there anyone here from Saudi Arabia? Okay, let's talk about them for a little while. <laughs> I'm just kidding. They're watching. Anyway, they have the cameras. They own the hotel, so they're... <laughs> yes? Halhul? That's not a country, bro. I know... I know people from Halhul think it's a country. <laughs> it's literally hellhole in English. Halhul. It's like Halhul. Hal We're from Halhul. No, I love it. All right. All right, let's get started. Uh, our first act coming tonight, we're going to have to clear the dance floor for them. Our first act coming tonight, you all know them, man. I'm so happy that they are here with us tonight, and they're from right here in Ohio. Please help me welcome the Freedom Deputy Troop.
Let's keep it going for Art of Freedom Day, everybody. Okay, very nice fish. Keep it going one more time for the Shabab, everybody, from Art of Freedom Day.
محمد الفيني وراي محمد محمد
على الويب سايت وما بعرف حتى مين اذا هي حقيقيه او لا لكن الحمد لله بعد اسبوعين انتظار من بدايه الفصل الاول ب 2016 وانا لسه ما كنت حتى فايته الجامعه لانه كنت متاكده انه في امل موجود وكان كان الامل هو هاي المؤسسه وكان الامل هو انتم والناس يلي امنوا بهاي المؤسسه وامنوا فينا وامنوا بكل طالب بيستحق الفرصه انا اليوم موجوده امامكم الحمد لله عم بكمل طريقي عم بكمل حلمي وموجوده هون لاوصل مش بس رسالتي رساله طلاب كثير احنا اليوم هون عم نحيي التراث الفلسطيني وعم نبرهن قديش انه احنا حتى بالغربه لسه محافظين على تراثنا شو ما كان جنسيتنا فلسطيني مغربي من كل الدول العربيه لكن ما زلنا محافظين على اصولنا وتراثنا والاهم انه ندعم اهلنا هناك وناكد كمان انه احنا مش ناسيينكم وانه رغم المعاناه اللي انتم بتمر فيها احنا بدنا نكون جزء منها جزء انه ندعمهم نحكي عنهم ننشر قصصهم انا اجيت اول بلد بس اجيت على امريكا من ثلاث سنين كانت ام صهايو وكنت كثير مبسوطه وانا بشارك قصتي مع الكوميونتي كان يمكن الايفنت متواضع تقريبا 50 شخص بس كنت فخوره كثير انه هاي هي البلد الاولى اللي انا عم عم ببني شيء وعم بحكي عن قصص ناس كثير بفلسطين وبمثلهم ثاني ايفنت كمان اجينا وكان برضه العدد متواضع وفخوره جدا ومبسوطه انه احنا اليوم موجودين في وات اي كول هوم في كولومبوس اوهايو مع الكوميونتي الرائع يلي ورجونا كل السبورت ورجونا المشاركة مشاركتكم إلنا اليوم هاي لحالها جزء من دعمنا وجزء من نشر رسالتنا ما بتعرفوا انه هذا اليوم كلنا بنقدر نعمل تغيير شكرا لكل واحد عمل تغيير بحياتي انا شخصيا وشكرا لكل واحد رح يطلع اليوم ويعمل تغيير بحياة شخص عم بنتظر نفس الفرصة ونفس الأمل بدي أعرض هلا عليكم قصة قصة من الطلاب المبدعين يلي كمان حصلوا على أمل نحن مش عم نورجيكم لنتورجي معاناة لا عم نورجي الإصرار والصمود والقوة يلي عند هدول الناس يلي بيقدر يعمل المستحيل بأقل الفرص وهي قصة نعيم ابو راضي اللي حصل على منحه مؤسسه ريتش اديوكيشن فند بعام 2021. انجليزيه فعل فرنسي في الجامعه للاسف بفضل الله حاليا على مستوى ثاني من اول واحد في المعادله هي 90.8 فاقد الشيء اما لا يعطي احدا واما يعطي احدا. ولكن برضه ما كانش عندي جرأة أتخطى الحدود المرسلية هذا المجتمع. لحد ما بيوم من الأيام في صوت جوالي هذا وسيم أنت مش أنت أنا بحكي مش هذا. طب ليه ما كان المجتمع عم يحكي لنا غباءتي؟ يعني يوصلني صورة مطية وأتخيل فيها حتى المكان اللي بدي أدرس فيه بيسمعني ليش؟ مش مشكلة الأدوات المساعدة بتتغلب عليها توكل على الله وثق اني رح اقدر اعمل شيء على الاقل لو ما قدرتش اتفوق رح اقدر اكسر الصوره النمطيه وكمان اتخطى الحدود والقيود اللي بدنا فلهيك انا بدي اقول الاميه تحرص على حدود الاطفال اللي
الخبر بالسنه الاخيره فشكرا لكم وبدي تحيه ثانيه لكم لانه انتم السبب بهذا الفرحه وبهذا الامل اللي ادخلتوه على وسيم وعلى 624 طالب اخر فشكرا جزيلا لكم والان بدي Always a white guy. It's never one of us. Always a white guy. 
And they have different words they use for the white criminals. Disturbed, deranged, delusional, depressed. All these nice D words they use for it. It's not the word they use for us. What's the word they use for us? Terrorist. Terrorist. See how fast they said it, Bill? Terrorist. Because we watch the news. But that's not the only word they use for us. There's another word they use for us all the time, and that word is mastermind. Please grab your kids. Please, please grab your kids. I'm not kidding. So please do so. We're always masterminds. Something about being Arab or Muslim makes you very smart. Mastermind. And they always grab. You ever notice when they go, when they grab these uh, 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 white guys, they always go to their neighbor. Like after they commit a terrible mass shooting, 60 people in Las Vegas, 15 people in Charleston, South Carolina, eight Asian Americans last year in Atlanta. And the police had a press conference around that kid and they said, he had a bad day. Hold on, he had a bad day. And they always go and talk to their neighbors. And you ever listen to their neighbors? We're so shocked by this. This is such a surprise to us. They always, we never thought this would happen in our community, even though their community is the only community this stuff happens in, okay? It doesn't happen in any other community. Here's my, they always, they, they have a different definition of a good neighbor. He's such a good neighbor, I haven't seen him for five years. Listen, I live in Dearborn, okay? My whole street is Arab women. If M. Ali doesn't see M. Hassan for like 45 minutes, she calls the cops. I think she's dead, somebody come over. She's supposed to be smoking on the veranda. Right now, I don't know where she is. surprised about anything. It's all Arabs. Nobody's surprised about anything, man. If somebody does something crazy in my neighborhood, go ahead and start talking to the people in my neighborhood. No, we are not surprised about this. Actually, Mustafa has been talking about doing this for a pretty long time. We are actually surprised it took this long before he did it. We're not white. You gotta feel bad for white people because they forgot where they came from. See? They forgot. That's why they do these ancestry tests. You ever see? You know what I'm talking about? The thing you, you spit in the bottle and then you send it away and then they send you back like your racial pie chart. And white people love this because they love because they're because they're not anything, so they want to eat something. You know, I'm one sixteenth charity or whatever the hell they say. I don't know what they say. You ever seen these commercials? It's the dumbest thing I've ever seen in my life. Our whole life we thought we were German. And then I took my ancestry.com test and found out that we're 21% Italian. And now we go to the Olive Garden and we eat spaghetti. <laughs> That's not the way it works. I'm waiting for the ancestry.com commercial where somebody is happy to find out that they're Arab. <laughs> I don't think you're gonna see that. Our whole life we thought we were Puerto Rican. And then I took my ancestry.com test and found out that we're 26% Arab. And now we go to the airport early, you know. <laughs> you're not gonna see it. We're not white. And being Palestinian is even more difficult because we gotta explain that to you. See, I always tell people, Bill, I always tell people that I'm Palestinian like Jesus. Because he's one of us. He's one of us, right? But see, this is why I love being us. 
I love being us. Because we Palestinians, again, I'm not ashamed to say it. We come from the most beautiful place on planet Earth, and we come from the most beautiful culture on planet Earth. And we live now in this country, and it's difficult sometimes, especially with our parents, but our parents have given us so much beautiful, be see, we're here tonight because the generations before us made us understand and remember Palestine. We're not here because of nothing. Kids who grew up here. See, Ben, like, like what he said before, Ben Gurion said, the old will die and the young will forget. But see, there are young ones here. I've been walking around and talking to them. Seven, eight-year-old Palestinian kids, I ask them, where are you from? They say, false. And then I met a beautiful man here tonight. 88 years old from Jerusalem, Professor Ishaq. Professor, can you stand up for everybody? This is Palestinian history from our capital, Jerusalem. This is the reason that we are here tonight, to keep these things alive, because they thought they could get rid of us. But see, we grew up with our family. Now, it is hard sometimes, don't get me wrong, because some of our parents can't, they can't speak English. Ra raise your hand if you were born in this country. Yeah, see? Yeah? You right here in the front? What's your name? It's Hop? Oh, like him. Okay. Is that your grandfather? Okay. Where's your dad? Is your dad here? No? Is your mom here? Yeah? And how long have you been in this country, ma'am? 30, 30 years. How's your English? You getting better? Finally? <laughs> see, Bill, you know, Bill, in Arabic, we don't have the letter P. Pop. We can't say it. We are the Palestinian people. <laughs> We like to drink Pepsi and eat pizza. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Oh, oh. Yes. You know, we are both to learn the language here. I know, I'm making a joke. <laughs> Don't make fun of us. Okay, I'm making fun of you. There's no P. Okay. There's no P in Arabic. It's very difficult. Some of them have been here 30, 40, 50 years. It's embarrassing to us. The kids are grown here. You can't be walking around saying it's all in Bethlehem for 40 years, all right? It's embarrassing. You can't walk around saying that they're going to say, oh, what the hell is this kid doing? <laughs> Please grab your kids. I'm not kidding. Please don't grab your kids. Whose kids are these? <laughs> Whose kids are they? <laughs> they belong to nobody? <laughs> all right, $500 for this kid. Who knows? $500. 500. Do I have $600? $600. $600 over here. $700. Oh, she's here. Okay, good. What the hell? It's okay. Don't they know we can just hit them? Okay, go ahead. Just go that way. Oh my god. <laughs> okay, when you grow up and they pay you to talk, how many of you can come up here? <laughs> Listen, we don't raise shy kids. We do not raise shy kids. We, this is, these kids are going to be leaders one day, I hope. <laughs> we raise strong kids. That's what we do as Palestinians. And it was hard growing up in this country. I, listen, when I was a kid, I came here to America when I was three years old. And when I came here, I did what every good American kid does. I played baseball. Because that's what white kids do. I play baseball. I played baseball now. My dad would come to my games, and my dad is very supportive, and he would cheer for me, but Arabs, they don't understand baseball. Arabs only understand one sport. What's that sport? Soccer. My dad would come to my games, he wants to cheer for me, but he doesn't understand baseball. He would say, I'm gonna I understand soccer very simple. Here there is a ball, here there is a ball, you get the ball to the ball. I understand the hockey, you push that thing into the hole. I understand basketball, you throw it into the goal. But baseball, where is the goal? <laughs> I tried to explain to him, I said, Bob, it's very simple. You stand here, you hit the ball, then you run here, then you run here, then you run here, then you run back here. When you get back here, you get a point. It's called a run. 
That's how faith works. And he says, so you are already standing in the boat? <laughs> this doesn't make sense to a refugee. Why would you run everywhere and just come back where you were? This is a waste of money. So he would come to my games with him and his friends, and they're cheering for, imagine this, a bunch of Arab guys smoking cigarettes, big mustaches, talking Arabic, and they're saying the wrong stuff. Touchdown, go, right? It's embarrassing. So one day on the way home, I said, Baba, enough, man. I am trying to fit in with these white kids. You are embarrassing. You have to learn baseball. And my dad said, okay, Habibi, no problem. So my dad did what Palestinian refugees do. He figured out a solution to the problem. He went to the store, he bought a baseball book, he read it all, he learned all the rules about baseball. And then he came to my game the next week and he cheered for me for two hours correctly. Yes, it's a beautiful thing. But on the way home, I had to have a talk with him. I said, Baba, thanks for coming to the game. I appreciate the support, but it's pronounced pitch. <laughs> You're supposed to say nice pitch. Beautiful pitch. Smack the pitch. It was not good. I had my dad sounded like the Arab Jay-Z in all my baseball games. But I'm almost done. I'm almost leaving. That means that means 35 or 45 more minutes to go. Just like that. I'll be I came here tonight for two reasons. First reason I came here tonight is because we Palestinians have to support each other. And when there is an event and a group like Reach Education Fund and people like Walid and Ghab who are working hard every day to make sure that our culture survives, that our people survive, then we need to support them. Because they're not, do they're not doing it for the money, trust me. They're doing it to make sure that our people persevere. And so all of us are lucky we've all done very well. So whatever you gave, give a little bit more. Listen, I went to the parking lot, I saw your cars. I know you have money. <laughs> whatever you gave tonight, even if you don't do it tonight. Because listen, while we are here in this room tonight, celebrating who we are and loving each other, there are people having other meetings in America tonight to make sure that we Palestinians never have meetings. You know what I mean? Yes. Yeah. And they're spending a lot of money. So we gotta make sure that we support each other and we love each other. So I want you to take one minute and look at somebody on your table, hopefully somebody you don't know. Look at them and tell them, thank you for coming tonight. Thank you for coming tonight. Look at the person next to you and tell them, I'm proud of you. Look at the Wow. 
Okay, please, 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 please. What is your name, sir? Nasa. Nasa? And ma'am? Please, please, on the side talking, please. Nasa and Aida? Aida. This Aida. is a good Palestinian name. Aida. I love our names. If you really want to understand how 74 years of occupation messes you up, go to Palestine and start asking people what's your name. Sad, Nidal, Kifa, Kareem, Ibtifa, Kosi, Arabi. You're like, all right, damn. We have a lot of problems. But Aida and Nasa, two great Palestinian names. How long? 42 years? Where are you from in Palestine? Betty? Okay. Let me tell you what scares me about getting married. Okay? I see people who've been married for a long time, like Nasser and I. Do. And I don't know them, okay? But I know exactly how they talk about each other. And it's never good for the man. Like if you ask Nasser and I do how they met Nasser, he says what men say. The first time I saw Aida, she was the most beautiful girl I've ever seen in my life, ever, forever. And I knew I wanted to be with her forever. I know. And then if you say to Aida, Aida, she says, what women say. Well, the first time I met Nasser, I never thought I would end up with somebody like that. But he grew on me like a disease. He grew on me. Oh, hey. She called me a couple months ago and she said to me, uh, you know how your mom calls you and you know it's not going to be a good conversation. So she called me and she said, hi, Anna. I said, hi, mom. And she said, <laughs> <laughs> guys, can you close the door in the back? Close the door. And she said to me, I am I am your mother. I said, okay. She said, you can tell me anything. I said, okay. She said, whatever it is, I will love you, I will accept you for who you are. I said, okay. She said, are you gay? It's okay. <laughs> she has no evidence. But this is what happens. Now she tries to catch me in a lie. You know? It's not a lie. No, I'm, not, I'm just not. You know. She calls me now. Amber, are you dating any girls? No, mom. Others? No. <laughs> no others. Hmm. See, it's very hard. I go to Palestine. I never say that I visit Palestine, I always say that I return to Palestine. And I went to Palestine, I returned to Palestine last year, I was in Jerusalem. See, it's very confusing in Palestine to be a straight, single, American man. It's very confusing. Let me tell you why. Because in America, if a man and a woman are walking down the street holding hands, it's totally normal. If two men are walking down the street holding hands, it's kind of weird. In Palestine, if a man and a woman are walking down the street holding hands, it's kind of weird. If two men are walking down the street holding hands, it's totally normal. I didn't know that. So I was walking down the street with a friend of mine in Jerusalem, and he wanted to talk to me, so he grabbed my hand. But I'm American, so I was like, hey man, stop it. He said, no, 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 it's okay. I said, it's not okay. Don't touch me. He said, no, 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 you can hold my hand. I said, I don't want to hold your hand. And then he gave me the most Palestinian answer I've ever heard in my life. He said, come on, hold my hand. What's wrong? Are you gay? <laughs> so I held his hand, you know, and I started kissing him too, just so everybody knows. <laughs> but the last thing I'll say is, They've been trying to get rid of us for a very long time, but they have not been successful. Just the last year, you have seen how
how strong we are. But that strength has come from everything. And Sheikh Shalab.
Freedom Dubki, everybody. Keep it going for them. Pictures, pictures.